そうです。本日は、青い子のペースをお呼びしております。I just want to go on record and say, not once did Square let me air ride Heartless, as shown in this、uh, tech demo here at the premiere in 2013. Fucking pricks. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long, long time coming, but we have finally made it. Without further ado, this is my take and review on the long awaited sequel and hopefully the finale of the Kingdom Hearts series with Kingdom Hearts 3. Let's see how it did, shall we? Going on, everyone. So, this is Pat coming at you with this and that, also known as the Great Talon. And alas, the Great Talon chooses his targets wisely as the hunter considers his prey. And the prey today is Kingdom Hearts 3.、Uh, a long, long development period 14 years. That is a long, long time coming. And I just want to say here that、uh, now that it's finally out and I can pick it apart, I, I just give them all the, the, the utmost respect. Even though this game isn't exactly what I, what I pictured it would be and exactly what I wanted.、Um, at the final product, at, at the end of the day, I, I would rather we got nothing than what we did get, unfortunately, as, as it hurts me to say that. But anyway, I will not stray from the、uh, focus here. So,、um, today we are going to discuss and pick apart the review of a 14 year old game in the making, Kingdom Hearts 3, seeing as though I have just finished the story last night. Uh, first off, as always, I may slip and、uh, include a spoiler or two here and there, so if you don't want this plot ruin, you might want to click away or look away、uh, before we proceed any further. However, if you don't mind a spoiler or two, let's jump right in and get started. Okay, so Square Enix, in association with Yen Sid, I, I, I mean Disney,、uh, has brought us the long and last and true sequel to Kingdom Hearts 2, a game that was originally released in Japan in late 2005 and in North America and Europe in the spring of 2006. March, I believe. The genre of this title is an action RPG, with heavy emphasis on the action and light to moderate notions of the RPG aspect. We will be looking at an array of features in this game, ranging from graphics to gameplay, and dissecting the story as an overall scene in the end if it's truly worth your time. Now, I'm just showing a bunch of、uh, clips here from the, the actual game, from tr previous trailers, and some of my gameplay, and I will comment on the gameplay that is actually. Mine.、Uh, right now, we're just going through some clips of the game. But the, we're going to start off with graphics. And as you can see、uh, in the trailers here and, and in the final product, the graphics, in terms of visual style and representation of the polish, I can say without hesitation that there here is one of the few key areas where Kingdom Hearts 3 shines. And I mean literally shines. By the use of the Unreal 4 engine, the shiny and robust environments, textures, and landscapes are truly a feast for the eyes. Even the cinematic cutscenes will have your jaw gape in awe that they are using the in game graphics to undertake those scenes. The transitions from cutscenes to in game action are nearly flawless as well, allowing you to jump back into the action after a scene plays out without having to wait for a long loading screen or any type of fade to black scene to transpire. This is an incredibly noticeable difference from past Kingdom Hearts titles. Um, from King to Kingdom Hearts 3. You'll begin to notice a little nuance, such as Sora's hair flowing in the wind as he's jumping in the air, and to Donald and Goofy's clothing swaying as they're running, running around. I was playing this on my PS4 Pro, and it seems to have an output of 1440p overall. It does not include an option for HDR, which is a little disappointing in either versions of the game. I checked, the Xbox version doesn't have HDR、uh, available as well, which is a little disappointing, but does, it really doesn't hinder the core experience in terms of the graphics.、Uh, there's an option for frame rate to be either be locked at 30 frames per second or free flowing frame rate mode,、uh, which is pretty much unlocked.、Um, and I cannot stress this enough do not mess with the settings, leave it as default. 
because um, if you do mess with it and lock the frame rate, it's going to stutter and skip and it's going to be a horrible experience. Leave the frame rate unlocked as it is and you can see consistent frame rates of uh, 50 frame, over 50 frames per second, close to 60, on, uh, which is impressive considering I was playing the game on the PS4 Pro and not the One X. Uh, on the Xbox One X, which tends to be more of the powerhouse in terms of hardware. Overall, the graphics are pristine and what you would expect from taking a large chunk of the advantage of the Unreal 4 engine. Now, in terms of the gameplay and control, the hack and slash action returns tenfold in Kingdom Hearts 3, and honestly more so than I would have liked or expected to be honest. Don't get me wrong, the gameplay works f works in overtime at that. There's numerous moments when you're struggling to keep up with the fast-paced mayhem transpiring on screen as you keep mashing X or the action button while waiting for the inevitable triangle command to prompt to go into a little mini-game with yourself, Donald, and Goofy, or whichever fourth party member you have in your time from whichever world you're presently in. In my opinion, there's just too much to rely on button mashing this time around in the beginning when you're in the honeymoon phase of the game you know you'll rejoice and say oh, this is possibly the best action game I ever played like I fucking stated but however when you're three or four worlds in doing the exact same carousel ride or water slide mini game you'll begin to be burn be feel burnt out from the tediousness that this uh, this game seems to offer um, one of the biggest problems of Kingdom Hearts 3, besides this overly convoluted story, which don't worry, we will get to shortly, and get to it we will, it's this oversaturated use of relying on one or two buttons to kill an enemy in the same move over and over and over again, with a teeny amount of hint of magic here and there, and wish it, washing, rinsing, and repeating till the very final moments of the game. Ah, yeah, yeah, uh, the combat feels like it's just been ever slightly enhanced over the other Kingdom Hearts titles and does not do anything to evolve the core fighting mechanics as, as time goes on. You mash a button or two until something dies, use a cure potion when need be, and then keep repeating until the credits roll. The controls feel tight, slick, and responsive, however, as you move Sora around the map and simple by a simple button press and can instantly send him wherever you want to go, which, whichever fashion you'd like. The camera works with you too, as opposed to against you. The free camera control is always welcome sight, and only time the camera felt like it almost got in my way was during the final boss fight and switched to an overhead view, but I guess that was the better scope out my surroundings. Um, you'd think that though Tatsuya Nomura, the, the game's director, would focus more on the combat aspect instead of just tossing in a mere handful of random action sequences that replay more than a sitcom does in the, the reruns in the summer. But no, 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 no Nomura-san decided that to invest all this time and energy into providing us with one of the most complex storylines known to man that can even rival the and trying to figure out the proper timeline in the Legend of Zelda series, only much, much more nonsensical. Now herein lies the Achilles heel to not only the Kingdom Hearts 3, but the plethora of all Kingdom Hearts games to date, leading back to Kingdom Hearts 2, and the overly complicated cast of Kool-Aid cultists known as the Organization 13 were introduced, killed out, reintroduced again, renamed, and resurrected into different bodies. Just plain old under unwarranted for a game that revolves simply around Disney and Final Fantasy characters, people. Oh, and speaking of Final Fantasy characters, or should I say lack thereof, Kingdom Hearts 3 shifts its focus solely to Disney and the Organization 13, and excuse me, delete delete Pixar characters, because there's no real Disney characters outside of the core group with Donald, Mickey, and Goofy. Um, it's just, you know, you expect to see characters like Cloud, Squall, Auron even appear, but no, you don't get even a hint of them. You get one mention saying how they failed their objective and they, they totally got wiped out. It's terrible. It's terrible. Um, and, and speaking of the worlds also, there's only four new worlds, and they're all Pixar worlds, to go to. I mean, and, and in this ten over 10 year developmental period, you would think you would have more than just Frozen and Big Hero 6 and Monsters Incorporated and Toy Story. I mean, the best part of the game for me was the Olympus Coliseum, which opens up the prologue, and uh, you're fighting with Hades against Titans, and I'll show in the, the video, actually, it's on, on screen right now. It's, it's, that's, that's the best part of this experience. And there's some subtext here you can find and revisit in the main menu, uh, you know, but uh, after you're done with the game and, and you're finding more, more, more about the story and everything, and there's a story so far and a plethora of other titles to play, but honestly, at the end of the day, it's just that the plot is so overly complex and complicated and uh, it's really it's really not worth it to me. If, if you think that the story is over too at the end of this game, it's it ends in such a way, it's like a dark, if you ever saw The Dark Knight Rises, it ends on that write your own ending kind of thing. And it's it's just really, really, really sad. If I had to rate the game alone on story, it would get a C minus, unfortunately. It's just way too awkward and it just, you know, I'm an, I'm an avid fan of the series, I'm not hardcore like that, but it's just way too complex to figure out at this point. And the game does very little to describe that to you in detail. Now another saving grace in Kingdom Hearts 3 is the sound and musical score. When it wants to, the score is reminiscent to the, that of a grand orchestra. 
and rivals even even the great legends of, of cinema, of Hans Zimmer, Harry Gregson Williams, Bill Conti, and even John Williams at times. Some very familiar tunes are return and they are most welcome to the ears and the senses. The voice acting holds up well for the most part, and it, when they're not speaking to complete gibberish about the plot. And uh, I really cannot emphasize that the, uh, that, the, that the sound here is the best part of the game, and I really want to elaborate on that in a minute. But first, I just want to go on record for saying there are some stale voice acting from time to time, such as when the Organization 13 members try to explain the plot like they sound like they're reading off a bad script from an Uwe Boll movie or a Paula S. Anderson movie. At the end of the day, though, the music is exemplary, and the voice acting is pretty okay on an average scale. But just so you guys can get an example, I just want to play the music if you haven't heard in depth from this game. It really, really stands out, and I think it needs to be appreciated in, uh, in, its, in its entirety and its depth, because it's just absolutely phenomenal. talk about replay value. At best, it all depends on how big of a fan you are of the series. In the 30 hours I spent with the campaign for me, I am honestly, you know, a little mixed. I, I was satisfied, yes. I felt there was no need to go back and do it all over again, or go back and do the, collect all the ingredients for the Ultima Blade, or go hunting down those, those fat pieces of flan, or getting all those Mickey emblems for the true ending, which is really more nonsense. Um, the amount of tedium present in Kingdom Hearts 3 is often heavy at times in terms of the combat that doesn't escalate beyond pressing one or two key buttons and a narration that runs circles around itself, providing you with little to no answers or logical sense. It's a solid action game at its core, with lots of flesh and in terms of substance and depth, it finds it very lacking, unless you count the ridiculously deep, never-ending rabbit hole of its complex plot. So now overall, is this worth your time? I can honestly say I score this game a 7 out of 10, and it upsets and pains me to say this, but honestly, waiting for so long in this game, I kindly, kind of wish it never came out. I, I cannot recommend this. I honestly can't. I, Even though I'm giving it a solid score, I'm giving it the respect where it deserves. The gameplay controls are tight, but honestly, and the music is phenomenal, but the rest of the game is just very repetitive, tedious nonsense with the nonsense of the story. Um, there's a lack of Final Fantasy characters, um, honestly, there's, uh, there's a complex plot that would make The Matrix and Inception look like cool runnings in Encino Man. Remember Encino Man? Brendan Fraser, the 90s? Yeah, yeah. But I digress, though. Kingdom Hearts 3, is it worth your time? Honestly, it's, unless you've played or super nerd played all 10 games in the series, it's honestly not. You're worth your time. I would honestly go play something else like Octopath Traveler, Resident Evil 2. Play Resident Evil 2, my next video review, guys. It's going to be Resident Evil 2 Remake because that game might be twice and it is simply glorious. Pros here, beautifully rendered worlds and graphics, uh, simply magical musical score, tight and responsive controls. Cons, tedious combat that does not evolve or challenge the player, overly saturated and convoluted plot, absence of Final Fantasy characters, and only a very few worlds to visit. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to link the Tumblr article in the description and have a great day.